Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video was requested by one of my lovely subbies asking to see my entire designer jewelry collection. So I do have 11 pieces that I'll be sharing with you today. I'll also pop in a 12th piece at the very end of this video. It's not considered a designer piece, but I did wear this piece in previous videos. And a lot of you reached out asking me, where is it from? Which brand is it? So I'll give you a closer look and I'll share the details with you again at the very end of this video. So let's get started. I'm going to go in chronological order from oldest piece to newest piece. And I'm going to start with Tiffany's. Um, this is actually not my very first Tiffany's piece. Unfortunately, the very first Tiffany's piece that I ever owned and received from my husband while we were dating in college is nowhere to be found. I think I misplaced it during one of my moves. And sadly, I cannot find it, so I can't show it to you today. But it was the Elsa Peretti open heart pendant necklace in sterling silver and it is still part of their classic collection and it's offered both at the store and online so if you want to go take a look it, it should still be there. This was the second piece that he got for me also from Elsa Peretti. Her style is very dainty, delicate, feminine. This is a bracelet all sterling silver as you can see super thin all sterling silver and then it has one stone and this is actually a white sapphire and there's quite a bit of tarnishing all around just because that's what happens to sterling silver when it's kind of sitting around for years and years. I have, haven't actually taken this out of the box and worn it for over a decade at least, which I don't know, it just makes me <laughs> makes me nostalgic, makes me feel like I'm walking down memory lane. But this one is called the Elsa Peretti Color by the Yard bracelet. And I think it's called Color by the Yard because you can choose which color sapphire you would like. So there's pink, there's blue, there's purple, there's yellow, I believe. So yeah, it's really fun. I would put it on just to show you, but it's really dainty and I don't know if it would show up well on camera. And also I would need someone to help me <laughs> with the clasp here and there's no one around. <laughs> so yeah, that's the first piece that I'll show you. And if you weren't already aware, aware of this, Tiffany's really became famous for their sterling silver. That is what they're originally known for. Uh, they wowed the jewelry world with their sterling silver designs and also with their high quality silver. So they were the first to use pure silver. I think it's like 92% or 94%. Uh, pure silver standard that hadn't been used before them. So yeah, sterling silver is definitely how Tiffany's got started. And of course they've grown to include many other types of jewelry beyond sterling silver. But that's what they're originally known for. They started in the 1800s. They are a brand that was founded and is based here in New York City. They started about 10 years before Cartier, so I think they are rivals, maybe. <laughs> so if you think of Tiffany's as the iconic American jewelry house, then Cartier is probably the iconic French jewelry house. But we all know that LVMH, which is the parent company to Louis Vuitton and many other brands, they actually bought out Tiffany's last year. So. Even though Tiffany's is a New York brand, they are now part of a French house, if that makes any sense. Okay, so now let's move on to these here. Oh gosh, they're so tarnished. Trust me, they look much prettier when they are clean. <laughs> but these are the braided knot earrings. Again, sterling silver for pierced ears. I purchased five pairs of these to hand out as gifts for each of my five bridesmaids during um, when we got married. And then this is the sixth pair that I got for myself, really as a keepsake. And I also wore these a lot through my 20s when I was, I don't know, just going to work and dressing up. They're really simple, really cute. These are also part of their classic collection and are offered still today. Okay. And then the next two items in this box here, I don't know if it's fair to say they're jewelry. They're not really. But since they are part of my Tiffany's collection, my tiny, small collection, I just wanted to show you. I don't know what to do with these. I'm not using them. But they're key rings. So this one here, everything here that I show you that sterling silver is going to be tarnished, <laughs> just so you guys know. So this is a star-shaped key ring. There's a little slit somewhere. 
over here and when you press it a certain way it pulls open and you can plop all your keys in it's really cute I've just never used it this was actually a lovely gift that we received from our real estate broker when my husband and I purchased our first condo here so it has a lot of memories attached to it and I think it's a really appropriate gift to receive from a broker right from your real estate broker okay um, meaning every time you use the key ring you think of your home and the person you bought or the person who helped you buy the home. I don't know, I thought it was actually ingenious of her. Um, this is also a key ring that was a gift from someone I just can't remember. Yeah, I just can't remember. So it's really simple and then it's like a little horseshoe. And there's a ball here that screws open. Wow, look at all that tarnish. Can you guys let me know in the comments below if you have any tips on how to polish silver? I had heard that toothpaste works, but I don't know if that's really true. Yeah, okay. Sorry guys, there's a lot of background noise. It's the motorcycles. Oh, let's go here. Oh my gosh, it's so noisy, I'm so sorry. Okay, so I'm kind of switching up the order just because it's Tiffany's, 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 and then I'm jumping to this. So in here is my engagement ring. And then in here is my wedding band. So, let me show you. And I normally don't keep it in here. I keep it out um, in my jewelry drawer. But I wanted to show you the original packaging just because I thought it would be fun. Okay, so let me just take off this ring. This one here is actually a special ring. It's not designer, but it. this ring was made from the pearls that was on my husband's grandmother's um, necklace, long, you know, pearl stranded necklace, and they took it apart and made a ring, uh, matching set of earrings, bracelet, and a shorter necklace uh, for me as part of our kind of wedding gift, I guess. Yeah, it was part of a wedding gift or engagement gift, so really meaningful, but I know I'm only supposed to be talking about designer jewelry right now. <laughs> okay, so this one here is the wedding band that my husband and I chose together from Tiffany's. It is platinum and I chose platinum because it is a very strong sturdy metal and it is known to hold its stones really well and over the last 15 years I've never had any issues with any of the stones getting loose. All of the round cut stones are embedded inside the metal here. It's just really really simple and it goes all the way around the one thing about this ring I will say if you guys are on the market for um, an anniversary band or stacking rings like this or you know a wedding band. Uh, I remember when we purchased this the Tiffany sales associate said to me now if you ever need to resize the ring it'll be impossible because the diamonds go all the way around. If you think there's a chance you might need to resize then just go with the band that has diamonds you know just in the front or maybe halfway through but of course I wanted diamonds all the way around and luckily for the past 15 years I have not had any issues with the sizing of the ring except that when I was pregnant both times it was really tight so I just didn't wear it and then this one is my engagement ring so I am going out of order here just so that I can show you what it looks like together since I normally wear my wedding band on the bottom and my engagement ring on top so you guys might not be familiar with Mimi So, but Mimi So is pretty well known in the jewelry world. She too is a New York City based jewelry designer. She actually uh, started her brand in partnership with Richemont and Richemont is the parent company of Cartier and Van Cleef's. So big, big name. She was noticed by the chairman of Richemont and that's how she started her brand. And it's interesting because when her brand took off and it took off because celebrities noticed her and they asked her to custom design some pieces, um, Richemont said, we will buy you out. We'll take the majority stake of your company and Mimi So, that's the name of the designer, she said, eh, no thanks. I'm actually going to just keep my brand and be independent. So she bought herself out. So very cool story. Good for her. So she's a female owned business and designer and yep she's based here in Manhattan I actually love all of her designs um, she's known for like a very modern clean aesthetic and also some whimsical designs and after my husband chose this engagement ring and he did it all by himself so I'm really proud of him I had no say in any of it 
Um, we have had friends and family members also go to Mimiso and buy their engagement rings there. So, yeah, if you're ever in New York and the things are, all the boutiques and stores are open again, hopefully soon, then I would say go check out Mimiso. Okay. And by the way, I have no personal relationship with her whatsoever. I just, I really like her designs. So this is a really simple platinum band with four prongs and one solitaire. I love the four prongs. It's, um, it's very much like the Cartier classic setting. The Tiffany's classic setting has six prong. And I just like the four prong because I think it looks a little bit cleaner, a little bit more minimalist. And I like that it makes the diamond pop. It's kind of like a centerpiece, so I don't like the extra prongs getting in the way. That's just me and my personal take. I think the six prong Tiffany style is also just really, really classic for sure. But this is more my style. That's how it looks. And he did a really good job because he really um, put quality over quantity or size. And he picked, he picked out a really, really clean, good quality diamond. So I just love it. I cherish this set right here, obviously, because... It reminds me of my husband. Okay, so let me put these aside. Okay, so let's move on to Cartier. I've been talking about Cartier and I haven't shown anything from them. So this is my beloved watch from Cartier and it is beloved not because it is beautiful and it is beautiful, I love it, but because it was a wedding gift from my parents and it was probably the splashiest, most, one of the most expensive, most generous gifts I ever received from them. I know it was a, definitely a splurge for them. They purchased this Cartier watch for me and a Rolex for my husband. And I just, it's, I love it. This is a discontinued model. Many of you have reached out asking me, what is this style called? And I had to look it up because I couldn't, remember and I couldn't find the name but I finally found it it's called the Santos Demoiselle so the original Santos looks a little bit different this is supposedly the more ladylike petite version of the original Santos the original Santos was created for uh, one of the friends of the founders of Cartier his name was Albert Santos Dumont and he was a pilot so I don't know if you guys know the history of Cartier but they started um, really becoming known for their watches but really in the aviation industry they were able to come up with I guess top-notch craftsmanship where the watches would stay precise and maintain I, I don't know, I guess the quality that it needed to maintain at really high aviation levels. So I thought that was an interesting bit of history. And that's why the original Santos is called the Santos watch because it has the last name of their friend who inspired that design. But this again is the Santos Demoiselle. And you would only be able to find it on the pre-loved market because it was discontinued in the early 2000s. I love the chain links. It's really scratched up now because I've banged this up quite a bit because I don't baby it, but I still think it looks beautiful. Yeah. And then it has a blue sapphire dial. And I did remove several links just to make it fit better on my wrist. So it is adjustable in that sense and then you can always just add the links back on if you ever needed to and in the past 15 years I've only had to get the battery changed out twice ever two times that's not bad at all two times and unlike a Rolex you don't have to wind it up every day you don't have to do anything it's really low maintenance and the Cartier level of service and the courtesy when you go to their stores is just simply amazing so I do love this it's my only Cartier piece and I think one is enough. Okay, so let's move this over. And then, okay, let me just ugh, let me just jump to this one because it's also a watch. This is a Burberry watch. Um, this was a gift, and I don't wear this anymore. The battery has died, so I don't know if I get a new battery in there, if it will come back to life, or if it's just, I don't know, it's been sitting in my drawer for many, many years. But it's a really slimming, or I should say it's a slim <laughs> band and just really kind of dainty and preppy. Yeah, here it says, it says Burberry here. Yeah, 
So I don't know what else to say about this, but it is, I guess, considered designer jewelry. So I thought I'd include it in this video. I'll probably just hang on to it and see if it works if I put a new battery in. Okay. And then this one is very random. I have never worn these, but this is from the designer Alexis Bitar. Alexis Bitar is a man, if you guys thought Alexis was a woman. Uh, he is a Brooklyn-based or Brooklyn-born designer. And so again, another New York City based designer. My husband won these for me at an auction. <laughs> he saw me eyeing them and I literally was just looking at them and petting them because total eye candy, especially under the sparkling lights of the auction. And he thought I wanted it, but I didn't. I didn't want it. So he bid on them and of course he won. So really sweet, really thoughtful. But these are not really my style. So you can see here they're quite chunky. Um, Alexis Bittar is really known for his um, use of like gemstones and crystals. So this one is quartz. All the big chunks here are quartz. And then you have little, little diamonds all kind of dancing around. And they dangle. These are sort of chandelier type. See, I still have the tag on it. I've not used it. And then, yeah, they're for pierced ears. So maybe, I don't know, I'll just hang on to these. They weren't super expensive. I don't remember what he paid at the auction, but the original price here is $8.95. Of course, they would be a million times more expensive if these were actual diamonds. <laughs> but I still wouldn't wear it because this is too big for me. Too dangly, too big. So I hang on to these just because I don't know what to do with them. And also I think to myself, maybe there will be one really splashy, sensational, like formal dressy event in my life that I'll wear these to. Maybe when my kids get married to their wedding. I don't know. But let me know what you guys think. Okay. Let me bring these down. Okay. So these three I actually purchased for myself. And I feel like... It's just a little extra special when you purchase jewelry for yourself. Um, these are all costume jewelry. They're not fine jewelry. And when I buy costume jewelry, I feel like my alter personality or my alter ego comes out. And I like to just do something a little, a little bit more different or a little bit kind of fun and... I don't know. I just I just experiment more, I guess, with costume jewelry. So this is from Hermes. These two pieces I purchased in Paris at the boutique. I was with two of my girlfriends. We were on a girls trip. It was a little over two years ago. The sales associate at the Hermes store was absolutely lovely. Not what I expected. I think because I've been traumatized by Chanel sales associates, I thought that I was going to get a really snooty SA, especially in Paris. But that could not be further from the truth. She was so lovely and just warm and helpful. I had no idea what I was doing. Two of my friends, they went off. One was looking for, I think she was looking for a scarf and the other one was looking for a bag and she had made a reservation and all that stuff. Um, and I just wanted some jewelry. So she brought this one out. This is the Click H. It's the slimmer version of the thicker click clack or the click H bracelet. There's also the extra wide one that I've seen, but I don't know if they still offer it. So it's pretty slim, very feminine, and it's in rose gold. I love rose gold. And you can see it's pretty scratched up because when I wear it, I'm usually working and typing and I'm banging it around at my desk and I don't baby this at all. So this is how it opens. You push sides together and then it releases one side of the H and then you pull it apart. So I have received questions from some of you guys asking me what color is this enamel specifically and un unfortunately I don't know. If I had ordered it online I would have paid attention to the color but because the SA was helping me she actually brought this out saying it was the newest color that was released that spring of 2018 so if that helps at all. And I never thought to ask the name. It's just like a really neutral, nudie pink color. And I think it goes well with a lot of different skin tones and a lot of different outfits, especially with the rose gold. And the sizing, I believe this comes in um, PM and GM, or maybe they call it something else now. I think they renamed their sizing. But this is the smaller one because I have baby wrists. <laughs> 
And I think these are being sold for $620 now. I paid a lot less because of the, um, you know, I, I was in Paris, so I didn't have to pay how much I would normally pay if I was in the U.S. And I saved on the, uh, what is that called, the VAT, the VAT tax as well. But yeah, currently it retails for $620. The larger size that is maybe double the width is going for $690. So not that big of a difference in terms of price. So if you want something a little bit more noticeable, I guess, um, go for the wider one. When I tried the wider one on, it just looked kind of gaudy on me personally. It just didn't suit my style, but I've seen it on other people. It looks really cute. And this is also a bracelet from Hermes. I really love this one. This is, oh, this is the Kelly dog cuff or bracelet. Also in the rose gold, it, it has this beautiful lizard skin. This is really what got me, the lizard skin combined and the color combined with the rose gold. So it's called the Kelly dog because this turn here, turn lock, is like the Kelly bag, which I know many of you guys know already is one of their iconic bags, older than the Birkin. So I'll just show you if I can, hopefully I can do this while looking through the camera. There are three slots here. So one, two, three, which means you can put it in any one of them. The middle one works really well for me in terms of the size. It's not too tight, it's not too loose. This comes in sizes uh, T1, T2, and T3. And if you go onto the Hermes website, you can see all the different measurements. This is a T2 size, so right in between. And like I said, because it has three different slots, you can kind of play around with it if it's a little too big or a little too tight. This one here, because it's in the lizard skin, it's currently retailing for $840. The smooth leather without the lizard is, I think, closer to $580 or $600. So there is an, you know, a substantial price difference depending on the leather that you choose. There's also crocodile skin, which is like $1,100. So that gets pretty pricey. I did try on the very popular CDC bracelet as well, but for some reason it looked like a dog collar on me. It looks super cool on my friend. And then when I tried it on, it looked kind of ridiculous. It just overtook me. I don't know why this one here, even though it's just as wide, just, I feel like it suits me better. So I'll keep that on just for eye candy. Oops. And then this one I got in Rome when I was in Italy last spring for our very first mother-daughter trip. So my daughter was eight years old at the time and she really wanted to go to Italy. So we went, we kind of splurged and Rome was one of the cities that we hung out in. And I saw this at the Ferragamo store. So this is from Salvatore Ferragamo and I just fell in love with it. So it is all leather all black leather on one side and then underneath is this really beautiful pretty pink and it has this cute little bow with light gold hardware and studs so I feel like it's dainty and feminine and cute but also kind of edgy and sort of rocker chic and it wraps around it's got two little clasps so you can adjust depending on your size I don't remember how much I paid for this it's pretty reasonable oh sorry I'm just gonna try to Okay, so there you go. Some of you have asked me about this as well. I don't know the name. I feel like when I buy things at the boutique, I hardly ask for the name of the color or the style, so I'm sorry, I don't know. But someone who used to work at Ferragamo responded um, to one of the comments in my earlier videos, and she said this was discontinued. So I don't know if that's the case. It may not be available. So that is the 11th piece, and I did promise I would show you a 12th piece. So that is this one here from Bimba y Lola. It's not designer. It's more like a high street, I guess, brand. And they have clothes and accessories and shoes and jewelry. And this I picked up in Barcelona, Spain when I was there last year. It says here. Oops. I keep, okay. So Bimba y Lola. This is just costume jewelry. It's rose gold, yellow gold, and silver. 
It looks like a stacking ring, but it's all one. And then it's got these cool studs, these black studs. So a lot of you have asked me, is this Cartier? Is it Bulgari? Neither. It's Bimba Ilola from Barcelona. So there is a trend happening here where I pick up custom jewelry from my trips. So Paris, Rome, Barcelona. I didn't even notice that until just now, but I guess that's my thing. I pick up little pieces for myself for fun. I don't buy expensive jewelry for myself. I leave that to my husband. Um, but I think fun costume jewelry is always just reasonable in terms of price and kind of adds a little pizzazz to your outfit. So I love these two together in particular because it has a similar vibe in terms of the studding. So yeah, so I wanted to show this to you guys because I did get a lot of questions and I didn't want to make a separate video just on this ring. So I just threw it in as the 12th piece. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you are new to my channel and you enjoy this kind of stuff, I usually am doing videos on handbags and other luxury items. This was my first jewelry video, but I take all requests and I'm happy to make any videos that you are interested in. Just let me know in the comments below and I hope you join in on the fun. Till next time. Bye-bye.